Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Possession by Peter James. So this is kind of one of his earlier novels, almost like his Juvenilia. I believe it was published in 1988. So it's kind of similar time to uh, the, the novel Sweetheart, which I recently reviewed. And in fact, they have similar themes as well. So in Sweetheart, it's like a haunted house story, and uh, like the main character is using hypnotism and regression to go back into a past life to kind of figure out what's going on. And in this one... Uh, basically she's using mediums and communicating with the dead and that kind of thing. There was also some stuff on loss in this though, so the main character pretty early on loses her son and we kind of see how that affects all of the haunting going on. It's strange because most people think of Peter James these days as a crime novelist because of his Roy Grace series, but earlier on in his series he was writing these kind of almost pulpy horror stories. I do think this was better than Sweetheart though. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go through and check out some of the, the tabs that I put in here, but first off, I'm going to read the blurb. Fabian Hightower has been killed in a car crash. At least, that is what a policeman is asking Alex, his mother, to believe. But Alex, but Alex knows she saw him that morning, at a time when he must have been dead. When the funeral is over, Alex tries hard to forget her bizarre experience, but her mind seems to be playing strange tricks on her, turning her grief into horror. When she turns to a medium, her worst fears are realised. Fabian has an unfinished business and he is determined to come back. But why? Whatever the answer, something terrifies the medium so much she refuses to return. Alex longs to turn to others for support, but there is a secret about Fabian that only she knows. A secret she must never share. So I think what Peter James is quite good at, his writing isn't necessarily complex, but it's very absorbable and very easy to read. But also, he just says stuff that's interesting. So for example here, Cheers! She raised hers and the glasses clinked. Know why people touch glasses, he said. No. You can see wine, smell it, touch it, taste it, but you can't hear it. So we touch glasses. It completes the five senses. Ever the advertising man, it's still in your blood. Which I think, again, that, that kind of points to that guy's character. I used to work in marketing, so pretty similar. This was a bit weird that she dis her alarm, the, the main character's alarm clock goes off. And it's described like this, it says, It seemed only seconds later she heard the shrill cry of an insect in trouble, urgent, insistent, growing louder. She fumbled for her clock, wanting to stop it before it woke Fabian. But like, whose alarm clock sounds like an insect? To be fair, this was published in 1988 or whatever, so maybe it was, uh, maybe that was what alarm clock sounded like. Yeah, so it was published 88, uh, this edition published in 2000, but this is the 2007 reissue. This, um, this dates this book here. I'm just going to read this paragraph out. Julie put it down on the desk and stared at the first page, a barely decipherable code of misspellings, crossings out, and red underlining. He appears to have typed this without a ribbon. Look on the bright side, said Alex. At least it's typed. I like this little discussion here as well. So this is because one of the characters works like a publishing agency. And they're talking about this book. Um, Alex nodded and smiled. Mad, completely mad. But the book he's writing could be brilliant. The biz, if he ever finishes it. Will anyone be able to understand it? No. So it should win a few awards. So true. This is why I don't set much stock by literary awards. And then both the mother and father of this kid called Fabian have both had the same dream that he kind of visited them in the night and said, like, good night, love you. And there's a character called Sandy as well. And I just thought that was interesting because uh, Roy Grace's wife in the Roy Grace books is called Sandy. So it's kind of obviously a name that's been floating around in James's brain for a while. I'm not sure how I feel about this, this throwaway reference to like veganism as though it's like a, a, sh a shade on someone's uh, like personality or whatever. A few different things really. It's just kind of implied that these are all untrustworthy, you know. The girl she had known since school days, mad, cranky, but kind. A girl who had been through three divorces, who had been a drug addict, an alcoholic, a Christian scientist, a vegan, who had meditated under the Maharishi Yoga and tried virtually every other religion under the sun, who had made just about every kind of a mess of her life it was possible to make. This girl was trying to give her some advice. I don't hold with that stereotype that, like, vegans are a mess. I'm a vegan and I am doing just fine, thank you. But this was written in 1988, so, you know... I like this little discussion here as well. Um, have you ever heard of a medium called Morgan Ford? He shook his head and inhaled deeply on his cigarette. How can you tell a genuine one from a fake? There are no genuine ones. Alex stared at him. You scientists can be so damn smug, you're infuriating. He pressed the horn irritably at a small rented car, all four of its occupants gawping at Liberty's facade. 
No, we just state truths people don't like to hear. That's equally smug. I mean, I'm on the scientist guy side here, both with what he does. He states the truths that people don't want to hear. And uh, the fact that I don't believe in mediums and psychics. I thought this was kind of relatable, this, this woman. Um, she's talking about her son, actually, but it says, Fabian hated her smoking and she had always tried not to when she was with him. She felt suddenly as if she were cheating on him now, took another drag almost surreptitiously and stubbed it out, screwing her nose up at the stench. Which is kind of something you get if you're a smoker and you're in a relationship with a non-smoker. Here's another example of just some of like the background trivia slash info, which I like from these as well. Main, main knelt down and stared through it. He focused the eyepiece. Bad place, London, for astronomy. Too much pollution in the air. Take it if you like. He shook his head. Not my field. Queen Victoria used to loathe microscopes. Said they enabled you to see things so closely you could not tell what they were. I feel that way about telescopes. They enable you to see things so far away you still cannot tell what they are. So yeah, all in all I enjoyed this. It was a pretty competently written sort of haunted house uh, supernatural thrillerish story. There's nothing particularly special about it, but it was easy enough to read and I whizzed through it. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. It was I and uh, another one down in my quest to read all of Peter James's books. So there we go. So there we have it. That's what I thought of Possession. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.